All right, friend. Now we're ready. Apologize for the delay. Right. There was uh, right, you good. You there's, good. A, there's a wire that that comes with uh, but actually like my Bluetooth headphones. It works with my PlayStation so that I can do this secret remote play. But if you use the wrong wire, it disconnects. And so anyway, so here's a funny story for everybody who is listening to the show right now. So uh, would you join Brady? Uh, you joined joined, Brady uh, in, Madden, in Madden 16. Yeah, I joined uh, mid, uh, I think it was the uh, middle of uh, season one. Yeah. So, so you know, Brady joins the league. I don't know. How'd you even find us? Uh, uh, through a good old friend, Danger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> are you and Danger still friends? Like, do you guys still talk? I mean, uh, you know, I, I haven't seen him on, on the sticks at all. But, you know, of course, uh, every now and then he'll pop in one of my streams if I'm streaming a game. and Sure. And uh, crack jokes here and there. So yeah, Danger's a good dude, and he probably thinks I don't like him. I actually like Danger a lot. I think he's a funny guy, uh, very passionate. Probably a little too passionate. Unfortunately, just it didn't work out here. And uh, but anyway, I, I like Danger a lot. So anyway, so Brady joins the league. He's Tampa. I'm the Saints. Um, and I don't even remember what happened. I just remember this was like my first interaction with Brady, which is kind of funny to think about now. So Brady joins the league. It's our first game. We we gotta play each other. And somehow Brady accidentally, you know, selects shotgun only playbook. And so here I am. I'm playing this guy who I don't I don't know nothing about. So here's my little pet peeve. I don't like to do. I don't like to talk like on chat, like on a voice chat during a game. Just because it drives me nuts. I can't focus and the other guy's like yapping and I'm I'm just like I'm fuming some of these games. I'm just like everybody else. So I don't like to voice chat. You're, I just like to focus and sit there. Like, I don't want family members talking to me. I just want to focus and play my right, game. And so right. Brady, Brady's a chatter. Brady wants to talk. So Brady's got his headphones in. I'm seeing shotgun only. Brady's wanting to talk to me. I'm like losing my freaking mind here. That was just, that was our first experience with one another. But we got through that. We got that all figured out. Brady's been a great member of this league. And honestly, he's been one of my favorite guys to play. He and I had uh, some really good battles over in the NFC South. And uh, recently, Brady has uh, decided to join our league uh, as the board member. Uh, he has kind of taken over FPR, fair play rules, and he's kind of our guy. So I knew that Brady likes to talk. He likes to chat and uh, figured to be a perfect co-host. So here we are, Brady. It is week three already with Madden 17. Really quick, right, tell me, right. what do you think about Madden 17? How are you feeling about this game? Um, I mean, you got to understand, Madden, you know, has been around for years. You know, they tried to tweak different things here and there. Of course, they made this more of an offensive uh, type of game. Uh, they definitely tweaked some things to where the reaction, ta- uh, reaction time between uh, defensive tackling and, you know, responding to passes and runs. It, it just seems like it's in the it's you know in the favor of the offense. Um, it's really really hard, and, and it could very well could be you know sliders. It could be a, a lot of things. But the one thing that I uh, I know for a fact is they brought back the wiggle stick. Now, <laughs> I used to uh, you know run you know college football leagues back in the day, and EA brought in a wiggle stick where you could basically on a dime move around your player. You didn't have to do no juke, no spin move, no nothing. All you had to do was wiggle left, right, and you're gone. You know, for some strange reason, the AI would get this this uh, blank look on their face and go the opposite way, and it's touchdown city. So it seems like they brought that back. Um, and me being over FPR rules, you know, watching, you know, you know, a lot of, like, you know, footage and stuff like that may have to suggest a few things down the road. Because uh, let's just face it, uh, I, I hate that part of the game. But uh, some of the pluses for me uh, have to be, um, you know, in this league you can't really uh, do any uh, no clicking. But in other leagues, um, you know, you you get to you know see different things here and there where you are playing lobby games. You get to click, and I like the fact that they brought back the stop and pop. Not no, not necessarily rocket catching, but the stop and pop where you can actually take control of your receiver and catch the ball, um, whether it be aggressive, rack catch, or just, you know, your possession catch. So, I mean, I'm I'm happy about, you know, the offensive side of it, but I really wish 
they would have um, left the defense more of Madden 16 because, let's just face it, Madden 16 was a defensive-style game. Yeah, and you're a defensive guy. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's all I, about I love, I love defense. I, I love defense it. Defense <laughs> and that, that heavy ground attack. I, 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 at the end of the day, I, the way I look at football is, is real simple. You know, uh, as everybody know, Nate, you're you're super strategic. I'm more of in your face, hit you in the mouth, and, and talk to you later rather than <laughs> rather than you know pick you apart. I'd rather just pound you apart and then you know uh, send you away with a nice little care package of a uh, good game and good luck the rest of the year. But yeah. it, it's uh. It's it's one of those things where I, on the defensive side of the ball, I, I really don't want you to have the ball. I don't I don't like sharing when it comes to football. But of course, you know, hey, some teams are out there that's really really uh, talented. And uh, and speaking of talent, um, not to toot my boys' uh, own horn, but my secondary, I love it out here in Jacksonville. You know, we got a lot of pieces in place. I mean, you know, just to name a few: Ramsey, Fowler. Terminator Smith, uh, you know, and then my boy, my catalyst, Paul Puz Lesney, a.k.a. Puz. He, he's, a, he's a beast, but there's a lot of teams, a lot of teams in the league that's uh, taking advantage of some of their free agent uh, picks uh, over the off season, And, I mean, hey, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see uh, who can uh, make it to the Holy Grail, the Super Bowl. Yeah, I got to agree with you. It's um... – Look, I, you know, you say that you're not a strategic guy, but I always enjoyed our games. They were always a ton of fun. I knew it was in for a battle. Um, yeah, I am going to be more of a strategic guy, but I'm also an offensive guy uh, because I play offense way better than I play defense. And so uh, we always had really, really fun games. So before we jump in there, if you guys don't know, check out our Daddy Leagues page, daddyleagues.com slash OMFL. It isn't linked right now. So as of right now, um, EA and Daddy Leagues are working together to get this to link. But as soon as this links, all your stats will be up there. All your schedule will be up there. Whenever games stream right now, you can go here. If a game is being streamed, it's going to pop up right here in this little stream. You can click the icon and you can watch um, your advanced schedules on here. All the great blog posts are up here. So my game of the week, Texans at the Patriots. I try to do this every week. My hot seat with Coach Rob is up there. It was a really great interview. Coach Rob has been a really nice addition here to the league. And actually, he and I, as we kind of progress, are going to be talking about bringing an Xbox One league, a Madden Xbox One league here to the grown folks community. Um, hopefully, though, I can talk him into staying here and doing that on the side. So make sure that you check out the Daddy Leagues page. Awesome stuff on there. Lots of new blogs that are up there. Here's the website. I, again killed myself on this website. I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, I am not uh, what I would call a webmaster. Uh, I do like to do graphics and websites, and so I did my very best on the site, and I hope that you guys enjoy it. All the leagues that are connected to us, there is an update that will come out later tonight or tomorrow, depending. My wife is already ready to kill me. She's telling me that I've spent too much time in here today. But make sure you check out that. If you click each and every one of these, you can go to their own page. And on the own page, it explains what that league is all about and kind of uh, some sliders. And I'm going to get videos made. So that's all going to be up there. The forms, the rules. If you know of a league that would benefit from having a structure, a forum, a website, uh, our rules that kind of govern our body and even graphics. I offer forums. I offer a website and I'll do their graphics for them. They just kind of have to follow our rules um, that kind of guide our community as a whole. So you can kind of check out right here what that those rules are and what that kind of looks like. Um, and then if you know anybody that would like to join us, we do have some open teams. Make sure you hit join us. Send them to our website, Grown Folks OC for online community, grownfolksoc.com. They can hit join us. They fill out this really quick, short um, application. It emails me. I add them to our group me application chat and we walk them through the next step. So lots of good stuff that's out there. Make sure that you're joining. Uh, and checking out and reading everything that we're putting out. Hopefully, I can get Brady and everybody else to come be a part of these shows. Every week, Brady's going to hopefully be a part of the show, and uh, we'll have him do a little FPR reminder. Matter of fact, I'm going to put him on the spot at the end of the show. He's going to do a little... <laughs> uh, I got unplugged. All right, let's try that again. Anyway, we'll put him on the spot. <laughs> He's going to do a little FPR at the very end. Um, 
So yeah, let's just jump right in there. We're already in week three, but let's take a look at week one. Um, we'll look at a few games here. I'm sharing my screen, so if you want to see the actual franchise that's up, you can hit share screen and, and watch what we've got going here. Brady, let me just let's just talk about a couple of games here that stick out. And the first one that pops out to me is the Panthers getting the win on the road against the Denver Broncos, 23 to 16, double zero with his new team over in Carolina. That team is stacked. They have players left and right. They know how to do it all, and they know how to do it all really, really well. You can see their offensive rushing numbers, 216 to 78. The Broncos getting a little passing game going. They're going 219 to 137. But it looked like this game kind of got away uh, really early from the Denver Broncos as Carolina goes up early in the first half. Denver makes a little run there at the end, but Carolina seals it with some defense and a fourth-quarter field goal. Um, this is the game that really stuck out to me. Paxton Lynch had a, a pretty decent day with a touchdown, 88.9% completion or uh, quarterback rating. Um, the rushing attack was all about the Carolina Panthers, though. Jonathan Stewart, 10 carries, 113 yards. Uh, Artis Payne throws in another six for 70. Um, and the Carolina knows how to run the ball. Greg Olson doing his thing over there in Carolina, five catches uh, for 50 yards. Um, don't really like to look at the blocking stacks because that's kind of boring. And then that defense over in Carolina is all about hitting you in the mouth and making lots of plays. And it looks like that's exactly what they did. Their top three guys in the game, Coleman, McCain, and uh, Keekley, these guys are all playmakers, making all kinds of plays. Um, let's look at the sack numbers. Looks like uh, Davis Sr. gets a sack, Brandon Marshall for the Broncos, and then E. Lee for the Panthers. And then, of course, there was an, an interception. Thomas seemed to have the big game. He had five tackles, three tackles for loss, a sack, an interception. That guy was flying all over the field. Chris Harris Sr. Uh, Jr. gets a pick, and then Klein also gets a pick. This team knows how to fly around, make plays. My boy, double zero, been with me since the beginning, the PC days. He comes away with a big win in week one. What game kind of stuck out to you, Brady? Well, see, uh, and, and to talk a little bit more about this game, um, the one thing that stuck out to me the most, and this is, uh, this is kind of bouncing off the FPR rules real quick. Uh, like you said, you're going to put me on the spot, but I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in with it. Um, the one thing that you got to understand in this league, guys, is, um, you know, when it comes to receiving. Now, I understand this day and age a lot of people are using tight ends but you definitely want to make sure that your number one or your number two receiver is getting more touches than your tight end not saying that not calling anything cheese here but the biggest thing is making sure that your um your wide receiver one or two is somewhere in in line which i mean benjamin is is there with four catches but you definitely at least want to have it uh split five and five so if you have at least Benjamin with five receptions, and then Colson uh, matches up with five. Eh, that's okay. That's okay. That's oh, I'm fine with that. But you definitely want your number one or your number two receiver to at least be matched up with your tight end. Um, but another game that uh, I guess you could say that stuck out uh, to me, and I'm kind of uh, you know scrolling through the uh, the schedule. One that really uh, stuck out uh, to me was uh, the Tampa Bay Atlanta game. I'm not sure if that was a, a CPU game but it looks like the game was started three times. Um, and it very well could have been uh, for connection issues. Yeah, they had some connection go. issues. There was still, like some major connection issues. And I think at the end of the day, this ended up being a sim game because they kept okay. getting disconnected. Okay. But the, but the big thing that I noticed is Atlanta's offense, 484 yards game, almost 200 yards rushing on top of almost 300 yards passing. Now, the CPU knows how to work the sticks. But then also when you go into the player stats, I mean, uh, let's talk about it. Matt Ryan, 152 QB rating, like sick, four TDs, 75 for long, and he didn't get the jersey dirty. No sacks allowed on him all day. And then, of course, you uh, scroll over to uh, your rushing. Dante Freeman, 21 carries. But they pounded the ball, almost 39 rushes, 39 rushes with just the main two, 107 for Freeman, 62 for Coleman. And, I mean, uh, and it looks like Coleman was the one that got in. You know, Freeman did all the work, got him close, and Coleman was the one that punched it in twice to get him two TDs on the season. Um, 
and and that's just you know just to kind of give you know a look at Atlanta and what their offense brings. And then another game um, that also looked like it was really really close was Massimo and Smash Smash. Looks like the Houston and uh, the Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears they also had a really really good game, and it looked like it came down to the wire. Fourteen points were scored in the in the fourth quarter by Houston to win the game. Like, they won the game in the fourth. And uh, it had to be behind defense. That's the only thing I could think. Four turnovers were were forced in that game. And uh, let me tell you, man, uh, I I love defense. So anytime you can get some picks or some fumble recoveries, it's golden. It makes your day a little bit happy. And and, and just going into, like, the player stats, you can really tell Houston didn't have a – Really, really great game. Cutler had a 50.5 QB rating, 276, but he was outshined by Osweiler for 145 yards, one TD, and he was even put on his back twice in that game. And then uh, let's see here what else we have in the rushing. Looks like uh, Lamar Miller had 12 carries, 72 yards, even put a touchdown, but he also dropped the ball, and I hate that more than anything. I hate it when a running back drops the ball. And, you know, I don't even want to get about – I don't even want to talk about my week three uh, game against the Ravens because <laughs> we had a chance to put the Ravens away early. We still got the win, but, man, fumbled the ball inside the 10-yard line. Actually, it was stripped and picked in thin air and taken almost 40 yards. Just he can't fumble the ball. <laughs> yeah, so it's – if you got to be careful with the ball. you got to definitely make sure you're holding on to it. But, you know, another big thing, this is, you know, this very well could have been, you know, uh, another one of those games where it was just, you know, not possible to, you know, pass, get, you know, get passing yards. But you definitely want to make sure you're keeping an eye on the 80-20 when rushing the ball. Make yeah. sure the number one receiver is getting 80% of it. 20% goes to your second, third, uh, you know, third running back. And correct me if I'm wrong, Nate. Fullback runs don't count on that 80-20, correct? They don't. Just halfbacks. Right. So it just has to be halfbacks, guys. So, you know, another, you know, shameless plug to the FBR, FPR, it's not hard to follow the rules. Uh, no. Like, you know, Nate in the beginning of the call was saying, you know, I came out with a, uh, a template playbook that was strictly, strictly vertical. Like, it had, <laughs> like everything in the play was vertical. Hey, run from shotgun, pass from shotgun. Like, there was no fluff, no bunch, no nothing. It was air it out. And it instantly, <laughs> instantly, Nate was like, not happening. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> we've so come it, a long way since that first game, though. We've come a long way. I think I still have the edge in victories. But we, we ain't going to go. We ain't going to go until, <laughs> okay. so, you know. All right, well. We'll see. We'll see. Well, maybe we'll get to play this year. Let me talk about another game real quick, though, because you've been nice about this game. This is probably game of the week right here. Your Jaguars uh, being at home, facing the Packers, you come away with a 28-21 to victory after scoring 21 points in the fourth quarter. Talk about your game for a second here. Now, <laughs> now this shout-out goes to Priest because Priest was robbed. <laughs> Priest was robbed. Defensively, shut me down. Only uh, only 79 passing yards in this game. You had the ball Three for 14 turnovers. minutes. Yeah, yeah, like, That's terrible. Like, like, yes, we had the ball for 14 minutes, and we only mustered seven points in the first three quarters. First three quarters. But the tail of the tape comes if you go into player stats. The one spot that nobody wants to look at, the one spot that people say, ah, it doesn't have anything to do with the game, special teams. And Priest is probably, you know, if he's listening in, I apologize for putting this out there, man, but kick return. Well, first, let's go to the punt return. So, in this game, it started with Denard Robinson. He had an 81-yard punt return for six. And FPR rules out there, guys, listen. Another shameless plug. No horizontal running. That's where you basically follow the line on the field. (laughs) That's where you follow the line on the field and you go across, and then you do that nice little 90-degree angle and just, ha, to the house. (laughs) No. Stop it. If you can just run at 
angle, just angle it just a little bit. Because in this year's Madden, if you catch the right angle, not the 90-degree angle, but the right, you know, what would you say, 45-degree angle, just angle it just a little bit. Angle it. Run at an angle. You know, just run at an angle. You might get a break. You might break free, and that's what Denard Robinson did, 81 yards, touchdown. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it goes to the third, like, uh, you know, another play in the fourth quarter, and then I get a 97-yard kick return. Two returns Perfect. on special teams. Listen to these stats. Yards. Seven total turnovers for the entire game. Seven points in the first three quarters. Your quarterback rating was 16. I Look, I got to be honest, I didn't even know that was possible. But you finished the game with a 16.1 rating, two interceptions. His completions were, he was 6 for 16 for 37%. You, seven total turnovers for the entire game. You held the ball for 14 minutes while he had it for, what is it, 23, 28, something crazy like that. It was, like, it was 25. He had it for 25 minutes. 25 minutes. That's crazy. I would lose my mind. I'd have to go to church on Sunday if I'd have lost this game <laughs> after dominating that long. This was a hell of a game. These are one of those games that we got to pull the video, and I may do that today. I'll probably go find the video for this one, pull it upload it to our YouTube channel, and just have it as game of the week, kind of one of those instant NFL automatic replays that we show, because this game was one hell of a game, won by special teams and that really good defense. And you seem to get it all figured out a little late, but it all worked out. Yeah, and, and you know, the big thing, like looking at defense, like, like speaking of defense and looking at it, Malik Jackson, Cyprian, and Gibson. 11 tackles, 10 tackles, 10 tackles. Them boys were on the field. Then you go to sacks. We compiled three sacks in that game, and Malik Jackson was on two of them. Terminator Smith, my man, Kelvin Smith from Florida State, matching up with his buddy Ramsey over there. You know, he had him. He had a sack on that on all day long. And, and it's then, the of worst course, kind of pressure, too, from Malik because it's that defensive tackle, which is what you're good at. It's what you've always been good at. You freaking – I still have nightmares about McCoy being in freaking Breeze's face all day long. But yeah, the worst kind of that. pressure is that pressure comes straight up the middle where you've got no time, and Malik Jackson seemed to be able to do that for you. And, and you know, the, the big thing that I love about my line is that, you know, a lot of people got to understand – you have Audric on one end, Fowler on the other end. You have sometimes you have Miller the third, <laughs> Malik Jackson, or you have uh, my buddy, my buddy. Uh, where, where is he at? Where is he at? I can't can't think of his name off the top of my head. Uh, oh man, where did he go? Ah, Cinderic Marks, the Bam Brothers. I mean, that is an insane line, and I've been gifted because I'm a fan of this team you know, in real life, and we just haven't had any success. So having this squad and now actually having a team that actually possibly put something on paper, man, it, it's just – it's amazing. And we, we're not even going to talk about linebackers in the secondary. Three ter- three interceptions happened in this game, uh, Amukamara and Colvin with three picks. But, again – So, uh, let's look at at week, um, let's look at week two real quick. Uh, let's see, let's see some games in week two. So, um, the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills went at it. The Buffalo comes away with a big 31 to 17 victory. San Francisco and Carolina, that game actually was a really good game, but the San Francisco 49ers ended up quitting after this game. So I don't really want to talk about that game. Dallas and Washington had a really good game, but the Washington owner actually quit last night. Um, Cincy and Pittsburgh. I think that this game was actually a sim game, but here's a really good game between Chaotic and Bill, two board members as the New York Giants come away with a 19-12 to uh, victory. The Saints make it close at the very end with six points in the fourth quarter. But this game was all uh, about the, the New York Giants' uh, defense. They played extremely well. They win the offensive rushing game 71 to 15. The Saints got to figure out that rushing attack. That offensive line is a little beat up. The Saints actually win the turnover battle 2 to 1. Um, but it's that offensive red zone percentage 66% to 50 for the New York Giants. And then time possession was actually pretty even. So this was actually a really good game. They ended up being about uh, the, the Saints' lack of a rushing attack 
and the Giants' ability to score in the red zone. Uh, Eli Manning, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Breeze has a really good day with a 114 quarterback rating and a touchdown. Again, the rushing numbers were pathetic for the Saints. Ingram, seven carries, 12 yards, a 1.7 average. Uh, the rookie, Lasco, doesn't do any better. Five carries, two yards, 0.4 average. That's not anything that you ever want to see. The Giants weren't all that much better, but they did get some rushing yards. Uh, Jennings did average five yards a carry, 10 for 51. Um, just not a whole lot of touchdowns there. Uh, Shane Vereen actually led this game uh, with number of receptions, five receptions for 54 yards. But Odell Beckham Jr. showing off and going off four catches, 130 yards with a touchdown, a 32.5 average. And then that defense played really well for the Saints to kind of keep them in it. Stephon Anthony with some big plays. The Saints really love their linebacker crew that they've built over there. This is a really good close game. My uh, my, my friend Chaotic, the co-commish, my Saints, my favorite team in real life. I let Chaotic have him because he's also a Saints fan for this Madden. Um, with a tough loss, they start their season out. Actually, now they're 0-3. Um, no, actually, they got a replay. So they're 0-2 right now, but the Giants have a really good run. What game kind of stuck out to you in week two? And you can still hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Because there for a minute it was uh, doing something funky. It was uh, sounded like it uh, took me off. But oh. in, in week two, in week two, I would have to say, you know, um, what kind of stuck out to me is is the quits. Uh, you know, not not really wanting to kind of bring that up yeah. in, in, in a positive in a positive show, but it's the quits. Just yeah. six to three, six to three. You win the game. You win the game perfectly fine and just because an fpr an fpr critique comes in on some things that were seen you get quits unacceptable when you when you go through the process to join the league you already know what you're getting into yeah there's no way not to to this league yeah when when you do the application there is nothing hidden from you you know what i mean uh, not to make this about a rant, it's just one of those things where it's like you already know day one what you're getting into. When you know when I joined the league, I had to have a critique, um, and you know it was it was something small because it was I just chose the wrong playbook, fixed the playbook, made my own playbook, changed a few things here and there, and the one thing that I try to tell the new guys is this: don't let the rules dictate how you play the game but adjust the way you play the game to the rules. Yeah. So, so if, you're, if you have a certain aggressive manner in how you play the game, that's fine. But do it in accordance to the rules. Yeah. And um, so, it, you know, it's, it's, it's very upsetting when you have a really, really good 49ers-Panthers game and it ends 6-3. to three, And just because of a critique, nothing really major – but just something that could be easily fixed, you quit. Very disappointing. Um, another, you know, uh, another game that uh, that kind of like uh, stuck out to me that um, looks like it was fairly close was uh, too slick and big hurt. Seattle Rams. That game looked like it was pretty decent. Thirty-four to twenty-eight. Uh, get in here, look at some of these stats. I mean, it was a really, really good game. Seahawks rushing game was a little bit better at one hundred eight to sixty-three. Rams passing game was a little bit better at 221 to 208. Fairly even. Um, turnovers, turnover battle was won by Seahawks, two to three. And turnovers will kill you in this Madden. And then penalty yards also seem to be, you know, pretty even, 35 to 20. And then time of possession. That's another thing that I pride myself on is time of possession. I'm not saying that I'm sitting up there milking the clock, even though that 17-second runoff, Nate, is killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. It's tough. Of course, yes, I, I need to speed it up. I need to speed it up, and there's a few guys in there. I will tell you, practice it, practice it, practice it. But, yes, speed it up. Get into your plays. But also, if you're following the FPR to the T, you're not going to be perfect, but if you're following the FPR to the T, you already know you're not supposed to audible every play. That'll speed up your gameplay. That'll speed up your gameplay, hands down. But – Russell Wilson, 110 QB rating, 223 yards, 223 yards, two TDs, and one pick. And he was put on his back, you know, not by Sierra, but he was put on his back twice in that game. 
to where uh, you know he saw saw some daylight. Um, it looks like his main target was a uh, CJ seven catches, seventy seven yards, eleven point. 11.0 average, so that's, and it's that's, a hold rookie. Hold on for a second. So here's my question, especially for you, for somebody who likes that ground and pound. I still have nightmares about Mighty Mouse over in Tampa Bay. How does Todd Gurley, one of the top running backs in this league, who averages in this game 5.4 yards a carry, only get nine carries on the day? In, in a close game where you're eating clock, you need somebody to get you some carries, he only got nine carries. Trey Mason got seven. How does Trey Mason, Mason get seven carries, Ty Gurley gets nine, and Ty Gurley's eating up 5.4 yards a carry with a touchdown on the day? How do you not just feed that monster all day long? But, and, and, and that's just it. That's where the 80-20 comes in. A lot of people get worried about the 80-20, and that's why, I, that's why I said before I pick this game, you have, you have to. You have to stick with your game plan, yeah. but incorporate our rules into your game plan. As long as you can do that, you can still feed the beast, Gurley, the second, and, and get him his carries, get him his yards, and possibly get them to win. Because, let's just face it, that was one of their touchdowns was through Gurley. So you would think, man, feed him the ball. But let's look at the receiving on this end. <laughs> Kenny Britt, five catches, 71 yards. And then he also he also pitched it over to my boy Tavon Austin from West Virginia. Never never been to West Virginia. I've heard some bad things about the place. But <laughs> four four catches, forty seven yards, and it was eleven point eight eleven point eight yards per catch. Think about that for a second. You don't need a first. Da- that's a first down. Yeah. That's a first down. All you know, day. That's four first downs all day. And then you t- toss in with Britt. He's getting five catches. 14 yards on average all day. Get them the ball. And that's another thing that I'm, I'm noticing. No passing TDs. None of these receivers got a touchdown, you know, from the quarterback. Come on, QB. Help him out. Get him something. And then, of course, when you go over here to the defense, man, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't deny him. Cam Chancellor, man, 10 tackles, six assists, four solo, and one for loss. I mean, the, the dude's a beast. <laughs> he's a beast and you know uh, Jaguars are in the market for Cam Chancellor if you want to you know talk to him about. <laughs> but anyway but, but moving along to like the sacks so you guys hey, look, you know, let's the look Jaguars at the Jaguars are in the market for Cam Chancellor you I will gladly take your strong safety over to the Cardinals we'll gladly put him over there with uh <laughs> with Matthew and let him just go make plays all day now now speaking of speak, speaking of you know Tyron Matthew let, let's let's talk about this for a second contract he just didn't he just resign. He did a lucrative contract. What, was it like sixty four million? Yeah, it's just crazy. Hey, you don't have that type of cap space. Just let him go to free agency. That's all. No, 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 no. You see, the beautiful <laughs> thing is that once we started this franchise, that new contract was already in there, so I don't even have <laughs> to resign him. So I don't even have to worry about him. Oh, so there you have see, it. There. I, see, I liked it. Be- see, I liked it. I liked it better when his contract wasn't in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah everybody this, this did. See, because then you would have had to, like, pay now, he all kinds of money. <laughs> but the LSU West is staying together. So I am a huge LSU <laughs> fan, which is why I like the Cardinals, because every LSU player ends up playing at LSU West in Arizona, and it ended up being a really good thing for me. Let's take a, a real quick look at, uh, before we wrap up the show, let's take a, a quick look at the standings, just kind of see where everybody's at. First, let's look at week three. We're not going to cover any games. We'll just kind of show you where we're at because actually a lot of games have been played. I got to say that these guys are itching to play and they're getting these games done. I know that Bill gives everybody a little bit of a hard time because he's Bill and, and he's just a little honorary, but everybody's been doing a pretty good job about scheduling their games. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games left. So a little more, uh, a little less than half of the games have already been played. And I think, actually, I think one of these games might be being played right now. So. Let's take a quick look at the standings. I want you just to talk to me about what stands out to you. We'll cover a little FPR stuff, and then we'll wrap this thing up with a pretty little bow and call it a night. Over in the AFC North, the Bengals got a quick two to nothing lead. Ravens, Steelers, and Browns all still in it. Still very, very early. What kind of sticks out to me is the Browns really struggling on offense. 23 points in two games. They're going to have to get that figured out over in the AFC North. 
Now, one thing I'll say, I'll jump in and say, you know, with uh, with a buddy of mine, even though he's an Ohio head and he's a he's a Buckeye fan, yeah, I just threw up in my mouth. But even though he's an Ohio <laughs> fan and uh, he's a close buddy of mine, went through you know crazy tragedy down there yeah. in you know the Louisiana area. Super but he's crazy. back. He's back, and he's got the Browns. I have a feeling uh, he'll be able to you know get that offensive production up. Um, I've actually been putting him through. Uh, what I like to call uh, some Brady enhancement drills. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I need to and sign up for some classes. No, 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 no. I'll be the first one to tell you. Uh, you know, there's rules. <laughs> there's some SPR rules in place, but we play the game out. Uh, sure. And just to kind of put, just to kind of put him on blast. Uh, one of his, uh, one of his games. Uh, one of the games me and him played. You know, nice little friendly, unranked battle. I think the final score. And you see, this would have got me booted. <laughs> banned and buried. The final score was sixty three to nineteen and I sent nice. him a nice I sent him a nice little picture of mm. Audric in the end zone on a fumble. <laughs> on a fumble recovery in the end zone and it said, Welcome to Madden seventeen. Welcome back to my King friend. We miss you. <laughs> so glad you're back though. <laughs> but yeah, so the Browns, I'm almost certain they'll turn things around, but I, I'm hoping that we, you know, definitely get a, a, an owner soon for the Ravens. Unfortunately, um, I had to play the CPU today, and I don't like that team. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I'm because, hoping that we um, will we'll, we'll have an owner soon. We've got some really good guys on the waiting list. I think actually one of them, I think, is actually watching the show. I don't know if he's still here or not, but uh, we've got some good guys, I think, that are just kind of going through the system. And that kind of okay. is a good transition because it brings us over to the AFC South. And uh, look. <laughs> As much as it pains me, the Jaguars, you know, you are one of my favorite owners here. And, uh, you're, you know, here's where you got to prove me, all right? They are my, my team to pick in the South. I do like the Texans. Massimo knows how to play. Um, it, you know, we got to get him to calm down a little bit, take a, a Xanax every now and then. Him and Bill kind of bump heads from time to time. But I do like the Jaguars. The Texans are going to give you trouble. Like, you two are going to go at it this year. But I like your defense over his defense. You're playing a little bit better than him right now. Um, here's where you got to prove me, though. You're going to make the playoffs. I think that that's a, a given. That's a really talented team with a really talented coach. But you got to win the playoffs. We've been struggling here in the OMFL. It was, used to be the grown folks, Madden League. But you struggle a little bit once we get in the playoffs. When that, you know, little Jim Moore-ish kind of kicks in for you. And you struggle when you get in the playoffs. You have to show me something in the playoffs. This is a really good division, though. you got the Texans, the Jags, the Colts. The Titans are struggling right now. 13 points on offense. Good defense, though. They're only giving up 49 points. Um, that's a good team. They just got to get that offense figured out. This is going to be a fun division to watch as it kind of comes down closer to playoff time. Now, see, I can't, I can't really speak on my – see, I don't want to say anything wrong on the podcast to fuel any, like, bulletin board material for these squads. But, I mean, I, I am going to win the AFC South. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just putting it out there. I am going to win the AFC South. They're just going to have to deal with it. Take that, Mike. Talk about the AFC it's, it's East, then. You got the Bills right, so, at 3-0. and You got the Pats at 3-0. and The Pats shocked me. The Pats were in the game of the week this week. I thought for sure they were, they were going to go down, but they shocked me. They come away with a big victory. The Bills are legit. I played them this week. It was a fun game. It was a frustrating game. I felt like I should. I had a better chance, but he just was a better team. You got the Dolphins and the Jets. The Jets are still trying to figure out FPR. We're working with him. The Dolphins are my buddy, W. Dunn. I think he's actually listening. He's my boy. I love him with all my heart. But the guy is the busiest guy in the, in the world. He's got like 67 kids or something like that. So the guy just doesn't have a ton of time to pour in this. How do you feel like the AFC is going to come out? Looks like the Bills in the past are going to be fighting it out all year long. Well, you know, I, I have to be partial here. As you know, my gamer tag is Brady Sr., so, you know, I have to be partial and go with the Pats. But if the Pats, just like I've told the, the Pats owner, if it comes down to who's going to be the kings of the AFC, it has to be me. I, you know, when it comes to game day. <laughs> it almost comes back to Brady comes, at the end. It, when it comes to game day, you know, hey, I give Brady all the respect in the world. Technically, he should be on a four-game suspicion even in the league. But, hey. <laughs> I couldn't, you know, I, I didn't speak up in time, but maybe we'll do some, like, you know, some suspensions later on in the season. We'll just lower his but stats. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just lower his stats. Put him everything zero. 
<laughs> Let's look at the AFC West. What what looks like it's gonna it's starting out to be the weakest division. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, when the Raiders were open, that's the team I wanted to be. Um, I'm not a Raiders fan, but there's something about that black and gold. I mean, that black and silver that is pretty mm. awesome. I wanted the Rams or the Raiders. I knew I would never get the Jaguars because you're a fan, but those are like those three teams that are young that people would have fun with. I figured if I wasn't going to have my favorite team in the Saints that I wanted a fun team. But I ended up letting Bowles take his Raiders. But this whole AFC West is really struggling, Brady. None of these teams are really playing well right now. The Chiefs, the Broncos, the Raiders, they're all either at 500 or below 500. This is going to be a struggle for these guys to make the playoffs. I, I, I got one thing that I will say. And this is a shout out to my man Balls because I've actually been, I've actually in Madden 16, I played with the Raiders, and uh, he's got something special over there. He's just got to get his, uh, he's just got to get his his game plan intertwined in their DNA. And I think the Raiders would be the ones that come out strong in this division because they have, they just have that it factor. They have a good defense. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want to have Mac on their team? I mean, it, it, just just an awesome, awesome team all around. So I say the Raiders will eventually come up. Here's, here's my dark horse for the AFC, the Chiefs. is a brand-new owner. He actually just joined last night, played his first game today. Got a few small FPR things to work on, nothing major, mainly on offense because um, he's just trying to – he's brand-new to CFMs in general, so he's just trying to learn. But – I think he's a great guy. I'm super excited about having him in the league. Um, this team is better. He just took it over. He actually lost this week, but he, he's, he, he thought he needed to back off, and he didn't need to back off, and it ended up biting him. He actually, to be totally transparent and honest, not to put anybody on blast, but we're going to be transparent in this league. Uh, he lost on a play that's banned. The guy ran a quarterback sneak to win the game, and that play's banned. That's already been taken care of. But I, look for the Chiefs to turn around. This guy plays straight up. He'll clean up the few small things that we got to get cleaned up. But I, I think that the Chiefs will make a late run uh, over in the AFC, and, and I think that that will be a, a fun team in the AFC West to watch. Let's hop over to the NFC. We're going to take a look at the NFC North. you got the Packers, Bears, Vikings, and Lions. The Vikings are the shocker to me. Um, they're at one and one That's a really talented team. They did score 45 points and only give up 23, but one and one is one and one no matter how you shake it. Um, this is another division that early on is struggling. Look, no one moves his roster more than smash smash loves to maneuver his roster and move pieces around. I enjoy that about him. Um, He scores a lot of points, plays pretty good defense, but this is a a division. They're going to have to get figured out. I like the Packers um, to come back to everybody and, and, and just kind of stay in there. I don't think they're going to run away with it. Look for the lions to make a push. You know, he's already at two and one. He's trying to make a push. I like uh, the Vikings to come out of this though. I think that they're going to get some things figured out. Just, it's too talented of a roster not to be up there, but the Lions could be that dark horse, all right? Junior knows how to play this yeah. game. I've been around Junior a long time. He might be a dark horse here. I, you know, me personally, um, you know, another shot at Priest. After week one's loss, after week one's loss, uh, you know, that was one of those games where he, he had it. He had it. And then fourth quarter, it all fell apart. And it was just like, you know, out of frustration, threw a bad pass, and there was a pick, and that just pretty much sealed it. Uh, I, I think the Packers, yes, they could come around. It, it's going to be close. I'm going to say it's either going to be the, you know, Packers or the Lions that end up as, as as possible playoff teams. Vikings, I, I don't know. It, it's something about the quarterback situation, you know, what it should be, yeah, you know, what the quarterback situation should be in video game land, you know. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater, or as I like to call him, Bridge Walters, is uh, <laughs> leading the team. But all a defense really has to do is hit Bridge enough. And, and Kingpin hears this a lot because we play a lot of Jaguars versus Vikings games. You hit him enough, he will turn it over like uh, you know what on prom night. And I swear <laughs> to goodness, it's the truth. Like, so the Vikings, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but right now, 2-1 and one for the Lions. But that's 63 points for and 60 against. Yeah, that's a lot. So their, de- their defense isn't that strong, it don't look like. So we'll have to wait and see. Well, the Packers are giving up 80. And, and I guess I got to give a little shout-out to Priest. Look, I, I, you know, again, not trying to put anybody in blast, but Priest had an issue in week two. 
where he did some stuff that yeah, we don't encourage. Um, and he, he was a man about it, all right? This is the thing that I love about the podcast that I don't like about Group Me is people can like, if you're having a crappy day and you're fought with your wife or your girlfriend or your, your boyfriend, if that's you, and, and you do your thing and like you read a message and you can put your own tone to it and you can like do what you want with my typed out message. With podcasts, you can kind of hear my voice, all right? You can hear I'm not, I'm a pretty nice dude, all right? I try to treat people fairly. So I got to admit, I had to get on Priest a little bit. He did some stuff in week two that he shouldn't have, and he owned it, all right, like a man. And he not only did he own it, but he actually purchased a platinum membership for the owner that he had the issue with um, and was really apologetic. So I'm going to give Priest a little shout out. Let's move over to NFC South. You got the Falcons, the Panthers, the Bucks, and the Saints. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be honest. All right, I'm a Saints fan. I, I enjoy rivalries. All right, and so having you and me over in the South, that was just a fun rivalry. Like other teams for the Panthers and the Falcons, they kind of came and went, but you and I just kind of steady Eddie. Like we just, I knew that twice a, a year, you and I were gonna have these really classic back and forth battles. I'm going to have to go back, though, and figure out this record thing, because I, I think you might be a little foggy, a little too much to drink last night about that record thing. But <laughs> when I see the NFC South, it hurts my heart. I kind of wish we were still there. But you got the Falcons with an early 2 nothing lead, the Panthers with a super talented team, 1-1, one one, the Bucks at 1-2, and two, and my Saints 0-2, oh chaotic. We got to figure this out, my man. 12 points on offense in two weeks is not going to fly. We got to get that figured out. What do you think about the NFC South? I really like the Panthers. That team is really talented, and I think they're going to make it through. You know, the Panthers are talented, but I don't know. I, I, you know, I like the Falcons, man. I like the Falcons, even though, you know, one of their wins was a, you know, a sim win, and, you know, sim stats can be a little bit misconstrued. I honestly have uh, faith in, Matt. you know, you know, Matty Ice, that he'll, you know, get everything going and keep it going, and they'll finally get a, get the monkey off the back. Because let's just face it, he is on <laughs> he is on par to become another uh, <laughs> Jim Kelly, great oh, yeah. quarterback, no rings. And I, I you know, I really uh, hope the best for the uh, Falcons owner. But yeah, it's 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 kind of disappointing to see Buccaneers one and two with seventy eight points allowed, and you know, Saints, uh, you know. Now, I'm, I'm a little happy at that. Saints 0-2, <laughs> you know, underneath, underneath the Buccaneers, I'm really happy about that. But you do remember the terror, Decatur Thomas. We ain't even yeah. gonna, we're not going to bore everybody with the details, but DT. But you're not going to forget I, about Morris, Morrison anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> Hatred. Hatred <laughs> is real. Let's, and that de- let's hop over to the NFC East, the Giants, the Redskins, the Eagles, and the Cowboys. This looks like a pretty interesting division. The Redskins, of course, though, has left. Uh, My favorite thing is when guys go through the entire process, which is pretty intense to join this league. Then they play a couple games, and then they message me saying, oh, this ain't for me. Okay, well, I don't know how you didn't know that weeks ago. But anyway, they're gone now. I think we got a new owner. I don't know. So many things are up in the air. But the Giants are on a tear. Bill, 83 points on offense, only 27 points on defense. You got to talk me out of it. Why are the Giants not going to run away with this division? The, uh, the, the main reason why this team is not going to run away with the division is because it's Bill. Something's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> Something's going to happen. I know you're hearing my voice. I'm pre- I, I bet you I'm getting like those little, you know, the little memes and, and everything else. Like, you know, the, the FU Brady's, but the, 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 the attitude. I have a feeling something is going to tweak him the wrong way and he – will end up choking and, and giving someone a little bit of an edge to take away the NFC East from him, he'll still come out on top. He'll still come out on top, and I will have a bullseye on my back. But we don't play no time soon unless it's the Super Bowl, and I'm not trying to make that type of prediction because, yeah, I am playing with the Jaguars. But, yeah, you know, Giants are hot right now. Defense looks good, but let's just face it. I don't think he's played anybody. I yeah, I mean, anybody. he's putting up a lot of points. I, I got to admit with you, sometimes I just want to ask Bill if he wants a hug. I know he'd probably punch me in the face if I could really tell him that. But, Bill, you know I love you, but sometimes you just need a hug, homie. NFC West, you got the Seahawks, the Rams, the 49ers, and my Cardinals. I know I'm at one and two. I, oh, I got to get that's it figured the, out. The, I think we're, we're getting there. We're getting it figured out. The rushing game. I can't figure out the rushing game. 
My team is built around the rushing attack, and I can't get it figured out. But that's a rough division. Uh, It's still Mm. open to anyone, but I got to get things figured out. 62 62 points? It's not good. It's not good. I gave up I gave up half of that in week one. It's terrible. Nate. I gave up half of Nate. that in week one. Oh. That that's bad. It's bad. That's I bad, Nate. But th- but I will tell you this. You know, I I've seen I've seen some of you know, seen, seen some of your, your, your posts and, and uh some things have been going on, you know, and that's S P R related. And uh <laughs> and, and, and a few let's, things to say the least. <laughs> a few things to say the least and, and, and I'll just jump right in and say this. Gosh, if you can hear my voice, FTR rules, real easy to follow. Don't let them dictate your gameplay. Just your gameplay to the way the rules are stated, and everything will be fine. But come on, guys. Start with the money plays. Shotgun runs all game long. Ugh. Really? Cover two zone all game long, too. Ugh. All game. All, all game long. Like, give it a break. Adjust everything. You know, kind of have a system. As a, as as I like to say it, in this year's game, the broadcast team in this game is really really good. It is like good. the broadcast team, like they really seem like they're calling your game, calling another game, talking about another game that's scheduled later on, and it seems like they're really really good. If the broadcast team is calling you out <laughs> <laughs> on your play calling, like that should that should be enough of a message. Like like really like if the broadcast team had to say. Oh man, he's running the same type of style. Of play. Like, stop it! Like, give it a break. But Nate, we th- this is not right. Like, you uh, need someone. Gotta... You need someone else in this in this division. I, I think if I was like the Rams, you would be undefeated. I, I'm almost, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it just like that because anytime you have somebody that's I guess you could say mirror image of how you play the game and pushes you a little bit harder. Cause I know you hate it. I know you hated it when I when I won the division. I know you hated that. Oh, I know you did. And made it to the Super Bowl and choked. We're not gonna talk about that. But <laughs> you need someone in the division to push you. Cause 62, I think you should retire. I'm just that's putting bad. it out there. It's bad. That, that's bad. That's bad. So well, in that this division, a- in in this division, I honestly, I honestly have faith in you, Nate. You'll turn it around make the postseason, but if there's going to be a dark horse, I say Seahawks will be the only team that I can see edging you out for the NFC West. That's a perfect transition to our last segment here. Talk about some FPR. Pick out an area that you feel like we need to work on as a league. Let's wrap this show up with a little bow on it. Talk about FPR for a minute. All right, so uh, as I pull up my as I pull up my, my computer screen, I, you know, I love my setup, you know. I actually have my TV attached to my computer tower, so I can flip between my game and my PC, and it's actually my living room. Like, my wife has her own living room, and I have my own living room, strictly with all my computer and games. My wife has already walked in and gave me, like, the, uh, you know, the two index finger around and around, like, wrap it up. Let's get this done. So, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's wrap it up. So, so So the big thing... Uh, uh, so the big thing that I honestly would say, um, let's let's go with offense first. Okay. Offense, guys. You know, um, play action. Play actions on third and long. Stop it. Oh. <laughs> the worst. Stop it's it. The worst. Like it, it's it's. I understand. This game is easy to manipulate. I understand it. I've played a lot of lobby games already. I've actually, I believe, I'm actually already over fifty lobby games played. And I'll be the first one to tell you, PA shot, PA shot twist, PA shot flip a middle finger and pass it. Like, stop it. If it's third and long and you have to come out with a PA something, you're you're playing lobby. We're not lobby lizards. We're not playing a lobby game. We're playing a strategic game of football in the OMFL. Get on board or get out. Um, another thing in offense is mixing up your play calling. I mean, knowing the 80-20. And just, you know, playing an overall balanced game. You can tell when you have a person beat. And when you do have a person beat and ready to tap out, run the ball. That's when you can do 
that's when you can go around the 80-20, is if the game is out of reach, it's fourth quarter, don't drop in four wide, four yeah. wide receiver verticals. Just run the ball, milk the clock. Now, if the person, now I will say this, if the person is still calling timeout, sure. hit him in the mouth one more time yeah. with a nice little, yeah. <laughs> nice little yeah. pass. He wants to be like, a jerk. Stop it. Bust him in the head. But if he's not, <laughs> back off. Yeah, yeah. If, if 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 they're like saying, "Hey, man," go, if they send you a message and say, "Hey, game's over, man," go ahead and milk the clock. By all means, feel free to milk the clock. And then, real quick, before Nate uh, gets choke slammed <laughs> through the table, um, defense, real quick. The game doesn't lie, folks. Um, as you know, this year in the defense or in your game planning, now it tells you what your ratios are: offense, yep. defense. Now, if you can't stay along the lines of that good old, you know, must be used 65% of the time for the 4 3 3 4, you know, no excessive use of, you know, man zone blitz. And one thing that I, um, you know, I, and this is not to put, you know, Kingpin on blast, but the one thing that I've told uh, Kingpin is like, get a piece of paper, put man, zone, zone blitz, and man blitz. Get your sheet, have it set up. And every time you call a play, put a mark. On I got one even or, easier for you, Brady. Get the, the PlayStation app on your phone or iPad. Pull up Coach's Glass. It does it for you. It's like literally in black and white in front of you. It shows you zone, man, blitz. How much percentage you're calling every play. If you're on offense, it shows you how many times you run the ball in that formation, how many times you pass the ball in that formation. Like everything is black and white. Coach Glass is the best thing ever. I love it. I tell you right now, if you play in me, I'm using it. And if you break in rules, I'm taking snapshots of it so I can show you in black and white, this is what you were doing and where you need to work on. It's so easy to do. Yes, yes. And then also, and, and then in closing, make sure, you, uh, make sure you're visiting the boards, the forum boards on, on a daily basis. You might not have to live on the board. But at least make sure you're visiting the board. And if you are a person that's doing waivers, whether it be for the practice squad or, you know, free agency, then you might want to check and see if you won those bids <laughs> or if you need to hurry up and outbid someone before you lose that player. But the the big thing is, man, you know, awesome season so far. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, content on, you know, the, the forums. Of course, I can't wait for Daddy Lee's to, you know, finally get up and running. Yeah. Uh, but, but in closing, again, you know, when it comes to the FPR rules, again, gentlemen, I, I can't say it enough. Do not let those rules dictate how you play because me being a person that started, you know, you know, season one, mid-season one with a team that I didn't even like. It wasn't my Jags. I missed out on getting the Jags because, you know, uh, Danger got me the information too late. But <laughs> needless to say, I was able to get in, didn't really have a custom playbook made, and, I, you know, I, I made a mistake. I made a good call, and it was the wrong call. Got told about it. Didn't get an attitude because at the end of the day, it's just a game. It's just a game. Get in, learn the rules, and, you know, just adapt the rules to your gameplay. And who knows? You might get one of those nice, crispy, clean, coveted OMFL championship rings, which I'm hoping the Jaguars get season one. Well, you know what? Since you're my boy, I'm kind of hoping you get one, too, if I can't get one. Um, yeah, my only last reminder would be contract signings are open. Look, there is a little flaw. The rules, I covered it in the FPR podcast that we did about 45 minutes ago, but check out the rules. Um, there is a little flaw. We give you a, a way to work around that flaw, but still keep it strategic. So make sure you know what the rules are when you're signing these new contracts. And what a great show. I got. Look, I'm just going to put it out there. Um, you're one of the best co-hosts I've ever had, all right? And so you don't have an option. We got to figure out how to get you on the show every single week. You were amazing. You blew it away. I appreciate you taking time away from your Saturday and college football and your family and being here with me. For all the other guys who joined us today, thank you for being a part of the show. It is a freaking – the best Madden, all right, and, and, and the best league. We got it going on. This is a fun place to be. Here's a shameless plug as I wrap things up. FIFA 17 is dropping, I think, in two weeks. We will have a FIFA club. Basically, you make a player – and we all play on the same team. We all play different positions, and we play other teams. It is a ton of fun. So if you pick up FIFA, come join the club. we got a chat and a forum that's already up and ready to go. Also, if you ever 
I, I'm not super into wrestling. I got into it because my kids like it. And so because my kids like it, I got into it because my kids are getting a little older and it's something we can connect over. But I started playing this WWE 16. The game is addictive. It's a lot of fun. We've got a great league. It's not our league. It's a, a league that we advertise for, though. But if you're into WWE, if you're into FIFA, if you have a clan, if you have a shooter, a, a Rocket League, uh, an, an NBA 2K, I don't care if you've got a league or a team that you play with, I can offer forums, website, and logos. We want them to come be a part of what we're doing. For Brady, for the rest of the board here at OMFL, thank you for tuning in to Press Pass Live. We will see you again next week as we cover weeks three, four, and five. Peace out, fellas. Later on, guys.